Good afternoon. In this video, I'm going to do a follow-up video on the, the excellent video that Shepard Ambassador put out showing that uh, Peter Buckman really didn't teach what Brian Denley was teaching, that uh, God has three parts. Now, unfortunately, what the confusion is that Buckman used some bad analogies. When you start using analogies, you're dealing with things, you're dealing with problems, you're dealing with water, you deal with, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the, um, various analogies they use, they, sunlight, those are things. And you always come back, that's Sibelianism, because it, and he was manifested. But here's the key, ver here's the thing you find, you find the Theological Studies ver Volume 1. This is the crucial area. And here's where Ruckman pins it down correctly. The other place he gets all over the map, and that's why heretics can jump on. This is why we, 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 we nitpick. This is why it's important to be precise. You can't be sloppy when you deal with these issues. You just got you got Breaker up there talking about the word vain means vanity and self. It doesn't mean anything. Vanity doesn't mean self. Vanity means emptiness. You say in Ecclesiastes, vanity, vanity, what things are vanity. But but Breaker will go to a word when time he feels like it and changes it. He has no qualms about that. Like he did with servant meaning slave. Going to the Greek, you want to do that. <laughs> King James Bible, every word is perfect, even down to the punctuation. And so when we get definitions and, and talk about these the theological issues, we've got to be very precise. But here on page 564, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost then are three separate persons, and I hit that separate is a bad term. They should be distinct. Because they can't be separate. But they are distinct. Three separate personalities, that should, well, should be again distinct, not separate, with mutual relations due to them. That's the key. There's a relationship issue. Speaking to one another, one another, plural. Speaking to one another, not speaking to himself. So you want to find down once you think that God's, when, the, when the, the Son is speaking, he's really speaking to himself. Speaking to one another. Recognizing each other, each other, not recognizing himself, recognizing each other, and sharing certain divine, divine attributes, divine attributes. Well, he, they share all divine attributes, not certain attributes. Again, this is sloppy. I got criticized one time saying that, that Welcome was a very sloppy, or lazy, I should say, or lazy uh, reader. Because he said he read a book a day. You can't meditate on a book a day. He said he would just shove stuff in his head. And so what comes out? Sloppy writing. If you're a sloppy reader, you're going to be a sloppy uh, a writer. And this is sloppy. But he's making the point that this is plural. Them. Do of them. Recognizing each other. Recognizing each other. Not himself. Not one person. Three persons. But each has a specific work of his own. There's the key in the, in, the, in the relationship dealing with the plan of God. Each has specific work of his own. That would go against everything Brian Dennis teaching. Each one has a specific work of his own. It's not three parts. That's why the analogy doesn't hold up with the idea that, you know, man's analogy... Because man is one person. He doesn't speak. We don't speak each other. <laughs> he, when the son is speaking to the father, he's speaking to, uh, to another person. And, uh, uh, let's see here. But his problem is, again, he kept getting involved with that, uh, na the, uh, the manifest thing. And on page 561, the Holy Spirit is distinct from the Father and the Son, as we said before. Some people think the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father or the Spirit of the Son and not a separate, distinct person. They will separate out. But this is not true at all. Notice in Luke 3, 21, 22, at the baptism of Jesus, that the three distinct persons, now he took the Holy separate out. Get that. That's correct. Not separate and distinct. Distinct. 
following evidence. God the Father said, Thou art my, my beloved Son, and thee I am well pleased. At the same time, uh, God the Son was being baptized by John the Baptist in the whole, in River Jordan. So he was the Son who became Jesus. It was the Word who became flesh. The Word became flesh. He's not the Father. John 1.1. 1, 1. He's not the Father. The son, uh, same time, John, uh, John, God the Son was being baptized by John the Baptist in the river of Jordan, and God the Holy Spirit descended in bodily shape like a dove. He was three separate, take both separate again, distinct persons, all present at the same time, and yet not the same. They're one, but they're not the same. They're distinct. So when you look at all the problems that Ruckman has, and you know, talk about this and that, that, analogy, and you say, when you see me, you're not saying, when you see me, oh, no, we're seeing you. <laughs> you're talking about it. You tell that to a judge. You know, I'm never repeating Ruckman. We're three parts. Man is three parts, tripartite. He's not three persons. He's one, he's one person. And here you see that where Ruckman finally nails it down and dealing with the Holy Spirit. It's an interrelationship issue then are three separate persons, okay, take both separate out, should be distinct, three separate personalities with mutual relations, relations, due to them, speaking to one another. That's how we know it's a relationship. That's why, that's why Brian Denley can't deal with one speaking to another. He thinks he's just speaking to, he thinks he's speaking to himself. He really thinks God the Father is really the one who is speaking to the God. The other ones are just kind of just, you know, parts that make up manifestations of the Father. Recognizing each other. Recognizing each other. That's what a person does. It's a relationship. And sharing certain, no, it wouldn't be certain divine attributes. It's all divine attributes. They don't share certain attributes. They share all attributes. Again, sloppy. Sloppy. But each has a specific work of his own in the plane. Now, before the plan began, they were all co-equal and co-eternal. That's why I deal with the eternal sonship issues. Well, they can't be eternally begotten because then you have a few of that goes. That goes. goes uh, John one eighteen, a begotten God. And uh, you know, now the Son and now the resurrected Christ will always exist now, but there will be no subordination technically in, in eternity. The, the war is won. But that's a whole different issue. But you can't get into philosophical speculation on the you know, workings of the Trinity before the Trinity began its plan and became known as the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. The Word became flesh. It was the flesh. The second person of the Trinity was the Word who became flesh, not the Father. But when you see the Son, you're seeing the Father and the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they had the same attributes. They're seeing God. You're seeing God in the flesh. You can't separate the two. You just can't separate them. But he's not the Father. He never claimed to be Father. He speaks to the Father. The Father speaks to him. And the Holy Ghost. They, the three. Three are one. And they're, they're, they're welcome to point out. So at that baptism, three are present. Three persons are present. And there's a mutual relationship between the three. And that oneness is unity, not sameness. That's what these guys will fall down on. They're not the same, but they're all one in unity. So I'll stop with this up. Amen. Thank you.